What's up, what's up everyone, it's Gaijin Gamer here, back with episode 8 of How to Be a Noob in King's Raid 2021. And today, we'll be discussing all things guild. And today, we'll be kind of covering all of the different uh, functionalities within the guild menu over here, as well as, you know, all the different, you know, challenges and currencies you can obtain, obtain as well as, you know, potentially how and where to spend that currency. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. Alrighty everyone, and first up we have the command center, and this is where you will be doing all of your guild wars from. And what you'll need to do is just go ahead and hit the guild war tab down at the bottom here, and what this is going to do is going to bring you into a menu. We're currently in a guild war right now, so I can't show you how to set up your defense team. However, if you um, aren't currently in a guild war or your guild hasn't joined one yet, you can go ahead and just left click this or just you know tap on the defense team setup. And you're going to need nine characters that you'll set up in a different variations of like some will give you attack bonus, some will give you a cooldown reduction, and some will give you like a CC re resist on some of your uh, teams. So just keep that in mind for who may work best for each of the following teams and just try to be uh, place it to the best of your ability. However, it's really not super important because you'll be facing bots most of the time, especially in the newer guilds. And um, yeah, so as long as you just set a team, that's that's important because also there's missions, various missions uh, that are going on uh, that have to deal with that uh, defense team setup as well. So just keep that in mind. Once you get into the Guild War, here's what it's going to look like. You're going to go ahead and hit Start Guild War, and uh, you'll just use you know three of your uh, you know characters to attack you know three of your your opponent's uh, you know, setups. We're currently facing all AI right now, as you can see it right here, so this should be super easy. And uh, one thing to note is like, if you're facing against AI and you have like really built characters, what I like to do is you can, you can honestly, you can set up a full team if you want, or if you just want to save some time, you can just, you know, use one character, hit attack, and it should be super easy. I'll just show you real quick here. As you can see, we're facing just like a bunch of just random you know, computer generated um, easy characters here. Um, so we'll quickly wipe the floor with here and then we'll move on to the next one. Alrighty, and next up we have the Raid Outpost. And now this one is probably arguably the most active as well as one of the most important guild functions that you'll have because you'll be able to farm a lot of rubies from it as well as, you know, just, you know, part participate quite a lot as far as your guild goes in this um, section, the, the Raid Outpost here. Um, as you can see, we have different various bosses. Um, that all have different gimmicks and I really encourage you all to go ahead and just kind of look briefly into each of the infos here as it's going to tell you what the boss does as well as you know give you an idea of what to use against the boss for this boss you want anti CC like you know fallen phrase shields and stuff like that which will give you CC resistance or like you know for example Gal goes like immune to CC um, on several of his abilities um, for Nordic uh, what you'll want to do is he reflects magic damage so obviously you'll definitely want to use physical heroes for Nordic here um, also if you can reduce the CC gauge like if you can reduce any of the CC gauges as often and as fast as possible that it's usually best for most of these bosses just to give you all a heads up as far as nubis goes it's more of like a magic boss um, as you can see it, you'll just kind of kill down his little scorpions that he spawns and it should be pretty easy from there um, maviel here is kind of an interesting hero he um, instead of worry about magic or physical he just cares about like attack speed as and because he'll have kind of like a buff that he'll have on him and you can't damage him until you get that buff down as you can see he'll do it 125 times before you can actually damage him so it's just important to attack as fast as possible next up we have gushak and I, I he can't really as far as gushak goes it doesn't really need magic or physical either but as long as you bring a bunch of uh, enemy dispels so that's something to keep in mind uh, quite a few characters to spell, so there, I could go through a whole laundry list, but just keep that in mind. You'll want to bring dispels for Gushak. Tearfest here is definitely a magical boss. As you can see, once he does, uh, and something to keep in mind for the boss as well, if you're trying to take on Tearfist here, um, you want to make sure that you save your abilities for when he does his blizzard, because the only way to cancel that is if you do a bunch of magic damage as soon as possible, as soon as he starts it. Uh, and it, it'll start you know kind of slowly doing damage but once she gets towards the end he starts to do a ton of damage so you can kind of turn it on auto for the beginning but once you hit about like the three minute mark or so depending on how you know far you are into the game just make sure to save all of your magical abilities for when he does that uh blizzard effect next up we have lacro and kind of the gimmick to him is that you will want a lot of physical dodge he's definitely a physical boss um you can kind of put him into a like a hit stun if you dodge a bunch of his attacks or if you deal massive physical damage to him. 
Um, however, he will do this ability, just something to keep in mind when fighting Lacryl, is that he will do something called, let's see, I think Raging Strikes, yeah, there it is. He'll kind of leap up into the sky and he'll put all of your characters down to about 10% health. Just make sure that you save all of your, you know, shields and heals till after he does that ability, because he'll go ahead and dispel all your characters once he does that as well. So just kind of keep that in mind, like for example, Fallen Frey Shields or, you know, just regular Frey Shields that you'll want to save that as soon as he does that ability just put your shields up and you should have a pretty easy time thereafter um, lastly we have the manticore and the manticore uh, is neither you know uh, physical or magical however um, he does deal a bunch of physical damage so you may want to have tanks that you know kind of defend against physical or just you know include your bracelets and stuff like that on your accessory pieces just to increase your physical damp defense as much as possible on your tanks. Um, also, here uh, characters that ignore defense tend to do pretty well on uh, the Manticore as well, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, nothing too special. He will also use a Dispel, so if you're using characters such as Fallen Frey or Frey that kind of put up these huge shields, you'll want to wait until after he does the Red Flame Breath, the Disintegrating Flame. In that case, he will go ahead and dispel your characters after that. Those are kind of the most important things to note over here and just kind of briefly go through these. Also, randomly throughout the week, you may get a rich goblin spawn. And if you're a newer player uh, that kind of doesn't contribute as far as like the damage goes to the guild bosses, this might be something that you look into doing because you you can only do one damage with each of your character strikes um, when you're entering the rich goblin right here. And it doesn't matter how much damage you do because it only ticks down for, per attack. So that might be one of the better ways that you can contribute if the goblin's up. If not, just kind of hit anything you can because everything helps at the end of the day. Um, one thing I failed to mention earlier is that each of these have different stages. As you can see, we're on stage one of this boss, two, four, and you know the final stage of this boss. Um, each stage that you complete, they'll have varying amounts of health, they'll do various damage, and it just kind of increases and scales up as you keep killing the boss. Uh, you'll get gems for each of the, you know, um, raids you complete. As you can see, we're getting 30 gems for, you know, killing this boss. And then if we kill the stage two, I believe we'll get 40, as you can see right there. And then it goes all the way up into the final stage, in which you'll still get 40, but you'll get increased rewards uh, as far as, like, the guild currency and stuff like that. So just something to keep in mind, and it's very important that you do these, because uh, there tends to be a lot of events tied to these, as well as it just contributes a lot to your guild. So next up, we'll just kind of hop on to the next one. Alrighty, and moving on, we have the Conquest Assembly, and here's what we'll just kind of do Guild Conquest. So the first tab will kind of hop us into the boss menu where we can go ahead and start to try to fight the boss there. Um, but it's important to note this tab below, the Band Heroes list. Uh, as you pro progress from mid, I'm sorry, from early to mid game, you'll go ahead and just kind of just keep note of the various heroes that will be banned from week to week. As you can see, here's the heroes that will be banned this week. And then below it will be the weeks projected out in the future. Um, so just something to keep in mind for future reference. Um, as you can see, we'll hop into Guild Conquest here. Uh, and as a newer player, I'd recommend two bosses. We got Tearfist if you're running a magical team, and Lacryl if you're running a physical team. And they'll be the exact same as the Raid Outpost bosses, as I covered earlier. So uh, for Tearfist, you want to do a bunch of magical damage once he starts to do the Blizzard. As well as Lacryl, you want to avoid physical damage if possible with some P dodge, as well as, you know, just do some massive physical damage. Um, so one thing to keep in mind for these bosses is once you do guild conquest, you can actually team up with a couple of your allies in your guild, um, in which case you'll be able to, A, you'll get two entries per week, because uh, if you do it solo, you'll only get one, because it'll take up two of your coupons up at the top, as you can see right here. But if you do it with multi-mode, you'll go ahead and sign up with, uh, you know, up to two more allies and I would recommend doing two if possible and you'll be able to use three characters each and the last person can either use two or you can kind of just kind of orient however whoever's got the strongest characters or the best ones that will work for the week that you're doing um, but to try to go ahead and just do as best as you can as far as the old conquest goes so it's important to team up for guild conquest so just keep that in mind moving forward so next up we'll hop into the guild shop Last up, we have the uh, Guild War shop down here, and uh, what I personally like to do, and what I think is probably the best buy, is to buy all of these fragments as much as you can. 
as you can see I bought three out of four so far and what these are it, once you collect a thousand you'll be able to select you know a various soul stone that you'll want to create uh, create the ticket for or the various class of the soul stone you want to create the ticket for and go ahead and just basically it's like a soul stone selector once you get a thousand um, so I think that's personally the best buy from here but you can buy unique weapons unique treasures um, even like the um, you know artifact tickets if you so choose i feel like that's kind of pricey though um but also you have the uh, war gaming set if you choose to get hannah's as well as one circle of friendship band which aren't the worst purchases either so something to keep in mind um these all are available and this is a pretty useful store like i said i recommend the soulstone fragments first and foremost and trying to buy as many and as often as you can throughout uh your guild wars experience Alrighty, before finishing today's videos i just want to quickly touch on a few things that i missed earlier one of those is uh as a newer player as long as you're spending stamina as you're in a guild you're actually giving the guild what's called activity points and as you can see, we have activity score for each of the various players that they've contributed throughout the week, as well as the total that, you know, minus the ones that have been spent here below the, the guild right here. Um, and what this does is it allows the guild master to then buy what's called guild buffs. And as you can see, you have various buffs here um, that you can buy with activity points or to level your guild up. You know, uh, we're at 10 already, so there's no more leveling the, the guild up anymore, but that also takes activity points. And uh, so yeah, you're actually contributing quite a lot by just spending stamina while being in a guild. Another thing is, is that um, when you do your raids at the guild raid outpost, um, you're actually giving the guild master, you know, various um, currency here, wood, stone, and metal to then upgrade your various shops throughout your raid. As you can see, our guild is still pretty new. So we're still working our way and trying to upgrade as much of these as possible and then i'll just give you know your guild better buffs or better you know rewards uh so it's awesome to do as many guild raids as possible um one last thing before we end today's videos i also just want to plug my guild real quick here it's gaishin guild on the america server um we'd be happy to have if any of you newer or returning or just you know happy to have any of your players that are here and then if you have any questions at all please go ahead and comment uh below in today's video um i'd be happy to help each and every one of you out with anything you may need within king's raid i hope you enjoyed today's video and i hope you found it informative as far as guild content goes i'm gaishin gamer signing out